Hello, Internet friends! It's Andy Gutierrez, the soothing face and voice you run to after a new episode of Star Wars Rebels. This week, Sabine returned home with the Darksaber and the Jedi in tow. And wouldn't you know it? Trouble followed. Luckily, I work at Lucasfilm, and now I'm going to show you how this episode was made. Rebels Recon starts right now. Returning to her home on Cronest with Kanan, Ezra, and Fen Rao in tow, Sabine's family greets her with an icy reception. Put her in a cell. She'll be held for trial. However, when it's revealed Sabine has the legendary Darksaber, her mother betrays her and alerts Gar Saxon. You've done well, Ursa. Keep them there. Fighting to defend her family, Sabine defeats Saxon with the help of her mother and decides to stay behind to embrace her legacy. I'm done running away. My father's on Mandalore. We'll find a way to get him back. Legacy of Mandalore gave us our first look at Sabine's family. I sat down with cast and crew to talk about the origins of Clan Wren, what they've been up to since Sabine left, and what Gar Saxon's death means for the Mandalorians. Check it out. We meet Sabine's family in Legacy of Mandalore. Did you get to record in the studio with the other Wrens? I did. You did? Yes. Luckily, I got to meet my bro and my mom, and we got to record together, which was really cool, because I wasn't sure that I would get that opportunity, but it was, it was really fun. We meet Sabine's family for the first time in Legacy of Mandalore. What can you tell us about what they've been up to since Sabine left? They have been embroiled in the politics of Mandalore. The Empire has taken over and has basically put someone like Gar Saxon in charge. They've kind of fallen on hard times, you could say. It's probably been a few years of damage control just to try to restore or some of their status. They're very downtrodden and ostracized, and that's why their armor is all gray. They have all these subdued looks as far as like what Sabine has, because I just wanted to show design-wise that the color, the life has been sucked out of them. Another little fact, Sabine's mother is the Wren. Her father basically marries into that family, but because the Wrens are more powerful, he takes her name. Is Clan Wren from Cronest originally? And how does that planet correlate with Mandalore? When you think about Mandalore, understand that it encompasses a lot of territory. There are something like a thousand worlds in Mandalorian territory that are neutral, not part of the Republic. They've lived on that planet for quite a long time. That's their stronghold. And you need to think of everything as like systems, almost like provinces. I've given a lot of thought to Mandalorian culture since the Clone Wars. There are clans and houses, and there are some that see themselves as more rightfully Mandalorian, and that would be like Vizsla. The Wrens are not from Mandalore. The Wrens fall into a group that would have been conquered by Mandalore. They are a branch of it and they've been loyal to Vizsla House, so they are thought of very highly. What does Ursa's killing of Gar Saxon mean for Clan Wren? It basically draws a line in the sand as far as what side of Mandalore's current political situation that they stand on. There's going to be a vacuum of power, and I think Ursa realizes that this is the opportunity, the chance to basically return her family, not necessarily to power so much, but really to kind of restore their security. Some clans would respect that because it shows strength, and it shows solidarity in the family, but it also throws Mandalore into civil war again. So Mandalore, at this point, just like Fen Rao says, is going to erupt into total chaos. So that's probably something we're going to get into in uh, the future. At the end of this episode, Sabine decides to stay on Mandalore with her family. How do you think the Ghost crew is going to compensate for having a core member of their team gone? Probably Ezra's life will be a little bit easier without Sabine constantly like <laughs> ragging on him. But I think to the Ghost crew, family is everything. Family is a top priority, and so when Sabine feels like this has to happen and this is where she needs to be, none of the crew questions it for a moment. Oh, you want to steal the Death Star plans? We hadn't thought about that. I think that Jin and Cassian and Baze and Truett and Bodhi are... So you're thinking that there could be a, a sequel? Well, there is one, and R2's in it. No, Chopper, I just don't see you as the love interest in this one. Yeah, no, it's terrible. I'm sorry. It's, uh, no. Lucasfilm Story Group's Paolo Hidalgo doesn't know it yet, but I switched out the coffee in his trusty mug for truth serum. So now I will use it to my full advantage and ask him one of your burning Star Wars Rebels questions. Pablo, hey. Hey, Andy. How's your coffee? It's all right. Okay, great. Thanks. Nice. It's free. Yeah, yeah. That, that helps. Yeah. So I have a question for you from okay. Sean Villanovas. Why would Kanan know of the Darksaber's significance if Sabine hasn't told him? Well, the Darksaber is actually a very important chapter in Jedi history, so Kanan would have heard of it. It's the kind of thing that a youngling would learn in Jedi history class. Now, he may not know all the details, which is the kind of information that Fen Rao helps fill in. Okay, cool. Thanks. No problem. Huh. 
Didn't think he'd be that truthful. But that's what I get. If you have more questions about Legacy of Mandalore, tweet them to at Star Wars using the hashtag Rebels Recon, and we'll answer what we can online. And now it's time for a sneak peek at our next week's episode through Imperial Eyes. Enjoy. <laughs> Thanks for watching Rebels Recon. We'll be back next week with a brand new episode. If you're itching for more Rebels info in the meantime, check out the episode guide for Legacy of Mandalore on StarWars.com on Monday. Thanks again, and I'll see you next week.